Coming to you live from Centennial College in Toronto, you're watching The Journal. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Michaela Richards, and we've got a great show for you today. So keep your browser pointed right here. And I'm Gavin Sang. On today's segment, we have great stories coming your way. We have two talented musicians to check out, a day in the life of a school principal, and a look at a candidate in the upcoming race for mayor of the City of Toronto. We'll also be taking a look inside the life of a boxing trainer and giving you a glance at life, a more healthy lifestyle. Plus, a live musical performance from Matt Silver right here in the Journal Studio. Hey, Michaela. Yeah? You know who Kanon is? Yeah, he's that great Canadian uh, hip-hop musician from Toronto. And uh, some of his songs include TIA and Waving Flags, which I know he made with a lot of uh, upcoming Canadian musicians. Right, well, the basis for Kanon isn't actually... He, he's, he can do more than just play bass. His name is Kiersey Rand, and he's been pursuing a solo career, and he's moving up the world of music. The journalist Nigel Mendoza met up with Kiersey to learn more about him. Is there a chance that you could come down and open doors to hurting people like me? People like me. People like me. People like me. People like me. That is Kanon singing Heaven from his latest album, Troubadour. But I'm sure you've heard of his story before, or at least how it ends. A man raised from the streets of Somalia, then taking refuge here in Toronto, where he has blossomed to be the successful artist that he is. Many Canadians are quite familiar with him now. But this story is about the man who has been by his side for the past four and a half years. A man who wishes to take the same musical journey that Kanon has treaded. That is Kiersey Rand, a musician of many musical talents. Even Kanon recognizes. Kiersey recently released a self-produced five-track album called It's Back. He plays all the instrumentals and sings all the vocals. Not everyone's like really trying to make albums or buy albums right now because it's just not the time so I, I released something called It's Back which is a five track album and uh, I wrote actually all my songs on that record between the tours. Um, I would sometimes be with Kanam around like one month to three months at a time and uh, when I got back I would only sometimes be here for about a month to two months and I'd be back on the road so it was just a really crazy time. And Still Need Your Love is personal to me because it's a song about about leaving somebody and you're letting them know that you're gonna come back or you that you still you still want them to be there, you know what I mean? And you'll do whatever it takes to to make sure they're there when, when you come back, you know? And uh, what inspires me to create I think the most is the music that my parents used to play for me in my childhood which is like a lot of Motown and Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye. My whole family is musical and I kind of really just feed off of them. Uh, like the first song I ever learned on the piano was On Bed and Knee by Boys to Men. And my sister taught me that, you know, she was already learning stuff. And that, like, when they share stuff with me like that, that really inspires me to do stuff, you know? When I listen to R&B today, it's really basic compared to the song structure and like just what they were doing to the music way back in the 70s or in the 50s or even before that it's really different and um like i, I want to you know tell stories with my songs have conversations with my songs again like 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 the way they did it you know there there was like heart in the music there was there was passion as opposed to making a song that people just want to dance to or making a song that is just going to be a hit on the radio there there aren't a lot of musicians out there that 
you know, they do the whole thing. I mean, I, I envision like when Stevie Wonder makes a track, he does the he does the drums and then he moves to the bass and he plays the bass and then um, he moves to the keys and then it's all him like on the song, you know. And uh, I hope that when if people give me a chance, then they'll notice that like that's that's all me, like from the drums to the bass to the keys and. Um, like I guess I hope they just see that like the work I put into it is is really on me and, and I mean every I mean every note and I mean every word you know that uh, you know hopefully they give it a chance man. <laughs> Keep an eye out for the release of his music video this summer for Still Need Your Love. Kiersey understands the difficulty of launching a music career and just like the title of this single, Kiersey still needs your love to support him. Kirsty definitely has a lot of passion for his music, not to mention the guy's got talent. To check out more of his work, you can check him out at www.kirstyrand.com. Later on the journal, producer Emmanuel Wint talks with some of boxing trainers and stick around for our live performance by Matt Silver. Did you know in the GTA alone, there are 1,026 public schools and in every school there is a hardworking principal? These individuals need to have the right leadership and skills and proper experience under the belt to get through each day in their career. The journalist Annabelle Fisher takes a look at a day in the life of a school principal. In a typical day, we start a typical day with uh, morning announcements. Good morning, Greensville School. It is Friday, the 5th of February. Please stand for the playing of Canada. I think all the principal does is sit in the office knit and be lazy. <laughs> in the announcements this morning, knitting club will be held during first nutrition break in the library. Wait, no, the portable's open. Oh, let's go. Wait, you can show. You have to get permission now. Well, I guess that's just fun. Did you always knit with a glove on? No, I just. It's your lucky glove. Yeah. <laughs> When I was in elementary school, I, I went to one school, I went to one small school um, in New York City from kindergarten to grade 12. And the school's name was Birch Wathen, and Miss Birch, one of the founders, was the headmistress when I was there. So she was the principal. She was just, I mean, I don't think she was more than about five feet tall. She was tiny. But, uh, and none, none of us were really afraid of her. But she ran a fabulous school. And I suppose if I had to look back and say, you know, is this the person I'm modeling myself after? I suppose it is. My favorite part of the job is okay, being, having contact with so many people. I love having contact with all of the students. I love knowing the students' names. I love having contact with the teacher. It's definitely a people position and I really like people so that's my favorite part of the job. Although I love timetabling and scheduling too and I love spending money so maybe all of the job is my favorite part of the job. I love my job. I love this job. <laughs> <laughs>